So let's take this discussion about AR timing to the next step, and that is choosing your parts. The very first, the, the very first thing you have to decide is how you're going to use the gun. Once you've made that decision, it's going to push off into which timing is correct for it. And then subsequently, once you've determined that, what parts to choose. So this is what I would consider a fairly general setup. This is a general purpose firearm that we would probably make for your average customer here who's not getting into competition and who's not looking for something that's gonna be optimized for field use. But at the same time, it's gonna be extremely reliable and it could probably take little portions of both competition and field use if necessary. Um, it's very general purpose setup. Very basic ballistic advantage barrel, 14 and a half inch. The gas sport's not too small. It's it's not overly gigantic. It gives you a lots of lots of of flexible use of types of ammunition without failure. Gas block, gas block's an elbow, so it needs to be metal. It needs to be 4140 steel, preferably, and it melanite's your most common finish on these nowadays, right? needs to have the right screws it needs to be within tolerance of the barrel so it can't be so loose that it's just venting gas everywhere your average gas block doesn't need to be fancy it needs to be functional so from there that's your gas input this is also gas input your efficiency of your bolt carrier group this is a micro best made bolt carrier group for sons of liberty um it is in my opinion, probably the best all-around choice, a micro best bolt carrier group, either BCM or Sons of Liberty, is the easiest thing to throw in there generally, and it's not going to get you in trouble. We round that off in the back here with an H buffer, a tub flat wire spring, and a standard carving tube. Okay, this is an Arrow Precision. It's actually they're actually pretty nice. Arrow's making really good uh, buffer tubes lately, so we've been. We've been really liking that product. So, very general, right? My This is where I'd start. I have a general input of gas. I have a general resistance of that, of that energy. The muzzle brake, I grabbed these because these would be pin and welded to make it legally 16 inches, but you could use everything from a basic flash hider to some sort of muzzle brake. A muzzle brake causes forward force vector. It's pushing against these washers. And so you're lowering your recoil. It's reducing that amount of recoil um, during firing at the cost of more sound to the shooter and everybody around them. So you have to make kind of a, a choice there just on who's shooting it and how you're shooting it. And if you want to reduce recoil or if you just want a general flash hider on there. There is a million different flash hiders and muzzle brakes out there. There's tons of videos on those on which one you which ones are the most efficient, which ones are average. I don't know that you necessarily have to go deep down this rabbit hole to get a decent one. We've been using real basic surefires like this from just general purpose use all the way to uh, comp and, uh, competition guns. And we've been playing around with them, plugging the holes, redoing holes. They're very, very decent for that mid-range recoil reduction where it's not driving the gun down, it's not letting the gun rise. Very flexible, very easy to use. But this is your overall basic um, general purpose setup. Nothing fancy, but it's gonna be extremely reliable. It's not overly expensive, it's gonna run. So let's talk about um, a high reliability system, something that's going to be used in really adverse conditions and you want it to just run. The parts don't look a whole lot different, but they are. So the gas block is still the same. The bolt carrier group is still the same. And this is from your, your general setup. You don't really need to change those. Um, I did pull out a Surefire flash hider. This is a suppressor adapter. The majority of people who are running setups like this also are running cans in some form or another. So having some sort of suppressor adapter makes all the sense in the world. Most people are not running muzzle brakes on these. You're gonna have a lot of movement in the gun anyway, and they don't, 
they're not they're not fun to shoot without hearing protection on if you're law enforcement or military the the convenience of hearing protection is is simply that it's convenience you don't know when you're going to have to use the firearm. It's not like, oh, time out. I got to put my fucking ear protection on. So you're just going to send it. So the muzzle brakes don't necessarily uh, come into play when it comes to something for law enforcement and military. Flash hider is much more sensible. Micro best bolt carrier group. The barrel, this is a 16 inch. You could also use a 14 and a half. This is a Daniel Defense Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Line Barrel. The reason I chose this is because this will give me the longest life of the barrels that we typically see. Hammer forging makes the barrel makes the barrel steel more dense. It resists abrasion longer. And then the chrome lining is kind of a kickoff, old school, um, corrosive ammunition. Nowadays, it's really used because of the ability to extract cartridges from the chamber better. So... There is a reason for chrome lining. Chrome lining will make the barrel last longer. Melanite's, I think, equitable when it comes to wear inside of the barrel itself. But the chrome lining for extraction and long-term reliability is pretty tough to get around. So, Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Line Barrel. So now you're going to an A5 system. This is three quarters of an inch longer than a standard carbine tube, which means you have to use a proprietary buffer system for this. This is the proprietary buffer system. I would probably run something like the A5H2, that's what this is, and then a rifle link spring or Sprinko green spring or tub flat wire. Um, this and the Sprinko green would be my choice. I don't have a Sprinko green on, on hand right now. We just sold our last one a couple weeks ago. So I just wanted to give you good representation of what that is. It would be painted green and the Sprinkos last a lot longer than your standard, but you're getting the benefit of a carbine link system with a rifle link spring in that system. I personally prefer the tub. The tub are damn near impossible to break and they run forever. So when it comes to the reliability system, I would probably go with a tub, maybe a green uh, and an A5 system like this with these parts and you'll be set. It's going to run really well. Lots of movement in the gun though. So you get lots of dot movement with this system. Now let's talk about competition setups. They are fairly radical in comparison to the other two. The other two had a lot of similarities involved in them. Um, you're basically just bolstering your reliability rate on the other systems by making a few changes. This, what we're doing is we're conceptually dropping all of the energy down to is the least amount possible and still have the gun run. And at the same time, that allows us to drop the amount of resistance that we have to that energy. And because everything's been lowered, we can lower our reciprocating mass and minimize the amount of movement in the firearm. It is fairly radical, and I don't recommend doing this unless you're using it for competition. But if you are using it for competition, this is actually a setup that I'm setting up for a gentleman for competition. It is amazing it blows your mind the first time you shoot one of these just how little movement you can get into a gun this will shoot like a 22 when we're done and we will try to optimize it to have the least amount of gun movement possible you can't get rid of everything there's a whole lot of sloshing and moving going on inside of an ar but you can definitely change your recoil impulse to as minimum as possible the first step is you need a really good barrel that's ported severely on the smaller side. And this is a Hansen, a Ballistic Advantage Hansen, 14 and a half. You, the, the days of 18 inch barrels and one and eight twists in competition are slowly going away, thank God. They were interesting times playing with parts and components, but quite frankly, I shoot my 14 and a half inch barrels out to 600 yards pretty regular in competition. I don't really see a whole lot of need for that extra barrel length and, and to maneuver around. It's just not needed. Having that extra barrel weight does help control the gun a little bit. The heavier the gun is, the less actual recoil you're getting to have to, to control. But with a lot of the newer technologies, it's just not necessary. And so you can get away with a lot shorter barrel 
and a lot more maneuverable gun. So mid-length or rifle length system, 14 and a half to 18, somewhere in that range, go to an adjustable gas block. This is a superlative. I also like the SLRs. The superlatives are less expensive. Some people don't like these. Oh, well, we've had really, really good luck with them. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Our mileage is a lot, and we've seen a lot of good with superlative. Bolt carrier group. This is the JP low mass bolt, bolt carrier group. This is the steel low mass. They make some super low mass ones out of titanium and aluminum. Um, now you're getting into, into a really dedicated competition. I'm dedicating this gun. I will spend whatever money it takes to make it move as little as possible. The other pieces of um, the other bull carry groups with different materials will wear out really fast. And I mean really fast. They'll wear out faster than your barrel. So you'll end up having to go through multiple bull carry groups just because that material is just going to get beat up right here in the camera here typically. The steel one's going to take quite a bit of punishment. We've had a lot of good luck with these. And quite frankly, with this material, we've gotten guns to literally sit as flat as possible, equitably to the titanium and aluminum, real close, okay? This is also a JP bolt carrier group. You don't necessarily have to use a JP bolt carrier group, but they, you know, I mean, if you're going to go to low mash, you might as well just get the JP bolt carrier group. They are built very well. This is one of many of the captured systems that are out there now. This is the JP system. We like these simply because we don't see the weights break as often as some of the other systems that are out there. There are some systems out there that are fairly new that actually use magnetics and and movable weights to lower the reciprocating mass even more. Um, your biggest disadvantage on these is that your spring is... I call them equitable to a 1911 recoil spring. They're not as big. You don't have as, you have more coils, but they're not as, it's not as strong as material. So these have a tendency to wear out a lot faster. You have to watch them. After about 1500 rounds on one of these springs, you better be paying attention or you're gonna get a short stroke and your gun's gonna stop running. So your spring death rate is much higher in these. These are basically three steel weights. This is, your standard AR-15 three steel, steel weight, and then we'll play with the springs a little bit to see if we can get it to smooth out. But typically your general spring that this comes with is all you need, especially with the adjustable gas block. Then you don't use your, you don't use your buffer retainer with these. These just sit in there. Because of that, I actually prefer to use a better gas tube, sorry, a better buffer tube with these systems. This is the enhanced arrow and it's got these little wings right here and they actually help kind of control this weight without having your buffer retainer pin in there um, so that it's not getting stuck on the notches and, and everything else down here. It keeps it in place pretty well. I do like these. You could use these on any of the other setups, just depending upon which way you're going. These are vented. They also have the rear vent and they have a little bit of notch here. They're a six point. We really like the way that these work and feel. They're $10 more than a normal bolt or a normal buffer tube. Man, buffer tube's hard for me today for some reason, but made extremely well. High quality materials, nice and smooth. I've never felt one that had bad machining in it. These I, they take their time when they're machining these for sure. So really good product. Then you get here. This is where things start to get a little bit of crazy. You have to adjust this to the ammunition that you're shooting. This is lowering your mass. You can play around with the weights in a little bit. I wouldn't, but you can play around with springs a little bit too. They do come in a, they do have a, a spring pack with different string strengths spring strengths that you can go through and play with on the captured to kind of fine tune the feel. But the true fine tuning on a competition gun happens here. This forward vector to reduce recoil is pretty important. You don't have to get super expensive with these to get a really good muzzle break. These are less than 40 bucks. This is a Midwest industry, it's three chamber. I used one of these for years. And quite frankly, it reduces a ton of recoil. These things are extremely good for the cost. If you're running the suppressor, okay, well now you have to run the dedicated suppressor adapter 
for that suppressor. So he has a Surefire. We're going to end up putting a Surefire uh, muzzle brake on there. We like these. We've had really good luck with these. And they're only a two-chamber brake, but they are extremely efficient for what they're doing. And we can typically get these this gun style to tune out with a two-chamber. You don't have to get crazy. Now, you want to reduce all of your recoil. The two that I recommend are um, PA and the SJC Lund, which is... Uh, I had one of those. I actually sold it. It was so loud it it bothered me. But my gun just sat there. They are crazy efficient and they're good. There's a lot of ch there's a there's a there's a gentleman on on YouTube who is uh, and I'll look it up and I'll I'll put it on the screen there. He's got some videos and he goes through all of these and he he shows you which ones are the best, which ones are reducing the most amount. Everything there's no such thing as a free free ride. Everything comes at a cost. And the cost of big brakes, like uh, it, probably the best one is the JP tank brake, is they're just loud. I mean, you're you're not you're diverting sound and you're pushing it either back or sideways. The more the more sound and gas you push laterally, the worse it is for the shooter and everyone around him. But the less the gun moves. So we've played with the two chambers because they're kind of a happy land quite a bit. We can play around with the popper holes. We can add them some track popper holes in there to, to kind of smooth brakes out just depending upon what the shooter wants. Um, but like I said, if you really want to go inexpensive and something that works really well, these things are bomber, dude. So for 40 bucks. But this is what I would look at for a competition rig in the guts right here. Lower that reciprocating mass, lower that dot movement. That's the whole key to this. And in order to do that, you have to lower your energy and you have to lower your resistance. Okay. Some final thoughts. You can see this is half of the parts and components that we've talked about just in this one video. And I just threw them on here so you can see how crazy we've gotten with the parts and components selection in this, in this one video on how to time an AR-15. I highly stress you talk to somebody before you start building an AR if you don't know exactly what you're getting into. And talk to somebody who's got good bona fides, somebody who actually knows how to build AR-15s and has experience building AR, a lot of AR-15s of different types and components. We see a lot of people buy parts and components online, and that's not a bad thing. But it is if you're not getting good guidance on which ones are okay to buy and which ones to avoid. We see a lot of subpar components coming here and people are like, but the internet said they're amazing. And it's like, well, they're not. So if it's a strike industry on it, there's maybe two parts that they make. We'd be like, hell yeah, okay, that's a decent part. The rest of them, dude, mind your P's and Q's with those things. They are not made right. And every company has those. Megpol actually has a has a QD piece on it. And we love Megpol, man. We sell their stuff and we've been selling them since the beginning. We're a Colorado company. And so are they. But they they make an in plate that we refuse to sell. And if you bring one in, we will highly we will do everything to talk you out of putting it on that gun. Because they crack. They're not a good part. So you have to understand the parts and components that you're getting into. And if you don't, please don't buy shit online. Friends don't let friends shop online without really good guidance. Or you're just going to end up wasting your money. And then you're going to be sad. And then I will ha have to make you more sad when I tell you your stuff is crap when you bring it in here. And then you might cry a little. And that's awkward for some people. Not for me, though. I'm used to it.